Hi everyone. In this interview post, we are continuing having a look at consequence. And this consequence on an individual and collective level. Understanding how and why it is that we have uh, accumulated and postponed consequence. And at the same time, why and how it is with the advent of inversion, consequence is going to become more quantified, meaning, as we've explained in previous interview posts or posts in our blog, uh, consequence have uh, always been accumulating but has been postponed within our mind, being and physical body trinity. Uh, together with the heaven-earth relationship, uh, the cycle of reincarnation, and the soul system in relationship to our pre-programmed uh, life design path. So, with all of those relationships no more existing, we are now inverted uh, with our minds only accumulating and manifesting consequence within ourselves, our own physical bodies, and so our own lives. And within this process, now what is also happening is your mind, being, and physical body relationship is starting to merge more into and as one. In other words, you have, for example, you had... For example, the mind and the being and the physical body. Now, heaven maintained separation between the mind, the being and the physical body. Uh, this was needed so that the mind or consciousness could have uh, the dominant say over who you are in your beingness and physical living. But now with the inversion of our own minds into ourselves and our own beingness and physical body, what's busy happening is um, what also assisted and supported to maintain the separation between the mind, the being and the physical body was where our consequence was channeled, deflected, and distributed within the unconscious of all of humanity and the unified consciousness field. Um, so essentially your mind would always only manage that of itself which was uh, directly related to your soul system, which is your pre-programmed life design path. Everything else was essentially filtered out and the consequence released to the rest of humanity. Now, with that not uh, such an opening, not existing anymore, you know, everything that you are participating in or experiencing or uh, creating uh, within your own mind is now layering within the mind itself, your beingness and physical body. So within this, with all of that, having nowhere else to go but into your own mind, into your own beingness, into your own physical body, this quantifies the mind, the mind's dominance within your beingness and physical body. And this is, for example, what is leading human beings um, to become so instantly in a quantum moment possessed. You know those instances where um, a person just kind of short circuit in their mind and um, accelerates into actual physical consequence, you know, doing things that they wouldn't normally do. And you have all the loved ones saying that they cannot conceive or understand why this person um, just kind of short-circuited, you know, and started speaking or doing things that they would never do. Now, to explain this is, for example, where that individual may have in their mind, 
been thinking about certain things, imagining certain things, uh, you know, reacting and actually built up a very specific personality system and charged it with so much energy in their consciousness that it literally took over their beingness and physical body. And so within this process, I have to understand that this is the extent of consequence that we've created in our minds, in our beingness and physical bodies. Uh, to show essentially, you know, our relationship to the mind, to consciousness, that the things you participate in within your mind doesn't just go away. It accumulates, it manifests, it imprints, it resonates into your very beingness and physical body. And, I mean, within human consciousness, essentially, uh, everything has been attempted and tried to make humans aware of the consequence of the mind, of consciousness, of energy. And this goes for both the positive and the negative. And, I mean, humans have not been wanting to see, have not been wanting to hear. And, I mean, it's been proven within human beings, you know, that change only comes with consequence. And awareness only developed with consequence. So we ourselves essentially made this decision. Like we are making this decision of saying, I can only change with and through consequence. So this is what this inversion process essentially means. That you're going to see and face and experience your mind in its full measure. Um, so this is why we've been showing, assisting and supporting to say your mind is a mirror of your inherent nature, your inherent beingness, understand it rather than existing in a master slave relationship to it and it taking control of who you are and your living is it's kind of going to be a point of it either the mind or me. And uh, within this, you know, consequence is going to accumulate, quantify, become more extensive. And it's not that it's even really like consequence is coming out of nowhere. We have created what is here as our minds, as human nature, as human civilization, throughout our lives, throughout generations. So the process of inversion... Uh, all it's done is reflect the consequence that we're individually responsible for back to ourselves, into our own mind, beingness, and physical body. I mean, this is the only way that we in any way are going to change ourselves, assist and support each other, and so a change in the collective humanity. Um, because if we had continued going on as we had in the heaven earth relationship in the reincarnation cycle in the mind being physical body trinity of separation i mean we would have eventually gotten to this point that we are now with the process of inversion uh, meaning that we would have eventually gotten to a point of accumulating so much consequence in our beingness that it would have just completely taken over the mind um, we would have accumulated so much consequence within human civilization that we would have um, essentially devolved back into the dark ages, which is kind of like where we're heading with our current relationship uh, between each other and this physical existence. So the process of inversion essentially uh, created a shortcut, if you will, to the eventuality that we would have reached and why this point of inversion is what's best for all is because i mean you can imagine how much and for how long we would have individually and collectively suffered as we kind of waited life after life after life accumulated consequence postponed consequence for ourselves, not only for ourselves, but for each other as well. Because, I mean, we were 
channeling and distributing and deflecting our consequence to each other and to everyone else and causing more suffering and consequence than was needed for ourselves individually and collectively. And so therefore, with the process of inversion, standing in the principle of what's best for all, is we shortcut or short circuit the, the infinite loop that we would have been in and waited for this eventual point of individual and collective consequence and instead bring it here now, face it here now, I mean, this is going to be a, a very much of an individual self process um, in, you know, walking through your consequence as your mind, your personal world and your relationships within it. Rather that than having us um, destroy uh, ourselves and this physical existence, so at least now keep this physical existence at the potential for change that it is now while we're walking our individual process of change and then initiating change in the greater world system, money system through the equal money system. So here is to explain more in depth the uh, reason for the inversion what is the consequence for this inversion and why is this inversion process best for all so i mean this is what destiny assists and support with especially the destiny i process pro it assists and support you to understand your mind how to investigate it approach it uh, change your beingness nature through changing who you are within and as the mind, and facing your consequence, um, standing up from within it, change it. So we're going to do the same in this world system, this money system. Get to know it, understand it, and within it, stand up from it and change it. I mean, rather than us having accumulated and postponed so much consequence that, you know, we really in the end would have had to start over completely and have destroyed ourselves, each other, this physical existence almost to nothing. Whereas now we still have the infrastructure within this world system as it now exists. We still have ourselves, we have our minds and I mean if one have a look at you know being able to listen to this interview, you're part of this process then, I mean, you still have that awareness as a potential to be able to take responsibility for your mind, your life, your relationships, and then become part of and standing with and standing together in changing this world system, this money system. So, also understand within this that with the inversion process is not something that um, contribute in any way to the consequence that exists, meaning that the consequence you're going to face in and as your mind, your being, as your physical body, is and always has been here. It was just postponed. Uh, so now it's coming through to be faced. And this is on an individual and a collective level. It's the only way to change, is to walk through and face consequence to understand it, to investigate it, to introspect it. I mean, as I have expressed in the previous interview post, how have we always dealt with consequence? We've jumped into the positive, to the other side of the fence, leaving the old side behind. Um, and I mean, you can take an example of seeing like a <clears throat> the earth, and imagine you're like the only person on this earth and you're staying in an environment and essentially fucking it up and then you jump to the next and in that environment you stay there for a while and then fuck it up and then you jump to the next and eventually you're gonna have fucked up this whole earth and you didn't when you initially started in a particular point look at how can I establish a living relationship for me with what is here in equality and oneness. I mean, then you wouldn't have had to go and jump around the earth and fuck up the rest of it. 
you would have lived in that one point with the rest of the earth in equality and oneness. So within this is what we're doing within our own mind being physical relationship. We are leaving our consequence behind in our minds, in our beingness and physical body. And then eventually it catches up to you on a physical level where, you know, your physical body, your relationship to it becomes more consequential. Your relationship to your own mind becomes more untrustworthy in relation to how automatically thoughts come and reactions come and everything in your mind becomes more unpredictable. Not realizing that why that happens is because all of the consequences that you have left behind is now starting, has now essentially become more dominant than you having the ability to jump a fence. There aren't any more fences to jump over to. Uh, you don't have the the power or the strength or the energy to jump a fence anymore, you know, and you're kind of like really pulled back into consequence. It's like consequence is like this little evil entity, you know, that uh, you try and run away from in your mind and in yourself and in your life, but it's got like a rope uh, attached to you. And you're believing that you're running away from it by going to the positive, the good feeling, the feeling better every time. Oh, but that rope is still attached to consequence, the negative, the bad, the evil, the dark that comes up within you. And then eventually, while you're continuously running away from consequence, consequence is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're, and you're like trying to run away. And then you're like this small little thing compared to consequence. And the rope stops. There's no more rope left. No more strength. No more power. And in the face of consequence, you are nothing. And it overwhelms. So... <clears throat> I mean, we're looking at this exact same problem in our world and our reality. I mean, if you ever look at the world system, the money system, it's doing the same thing. It's creating consequence for all the corporations, factories, businesses, systems um, that is extracting resources from a certain environment to what? Produce the positive, which is products and money. And um, then when an environment is fucked, it jumps to the next and resources and extracts physical resources, creates the positive, which is money, leaves the negative as consequence behind. But the negative as the consequence to the environment that's left behind actually is generating and creating and manifesting more environmental consequences in that area to the weather to the general environment, to human populations. I mean, it is really fascinating, this relationship to consequence that um, we have not faced, that we have not dealt with. And, I mean, now we're in this process on an existential level at a point where you cannot run, you cannot hide. You cannot suppress. Well, I mean, you can try in your mind, but it's not going to make a difference to the consequence that you're going to have to face. It's going to be with you, as you, within you. Even in the year after, you can't run away from it. Because in the year after, your ass comes back right to this physical existence and you face the consequence you've left behind on an existential level. And... As we've mentioned, more details than that one can listen to in the life review interviews. So here to understand more regarding the process of inversion, why consequence is becoming quantified and how to assist and support yourself and why it is that um, in facing consequence, uh, jumping to the positive is going to become more and more impossible. I mean, you know, people are seeing it in their lives as well. You know, even the rich, for example, can't live the rich lives that they have lived because of the cost of living skyrocketing, essentially. And within this, where money was used to make that happy jump, it's not going to be there anymore, as even in physical reality, the consequence is catching up. So there's, literally, there's not going to be any more jumping the fence happening. We're going to be in the thick of it all. And 
we suggest investigating destiny, investigating equal money, as the process to actual real change. Because energy, the feel good, the making things better, is not going to work anymore. Um, because it's not real. I mean, we will continue more on explaining that in the next interview post, you know, with regards to why is the moments of feeling better and making everything okay been the illusion that has actually contributed to the accumulation and postponement of consequence. Thank you very much. Thank you.